Until now, the West has remained confident that China's ambitions in commercial aviation, through COMAC and its aircraft like the C919 and C929, would never truly threaten their decades-long monopoly. After all, even China's most advanced jets still rely heavily on Western technology, such as the Leap 1C engine from CFM that powers the C919. But now, something that could completely change the game has emerged. AECC, a state-owned Chinese aerospace and defense conglomerate, has unveiled the CJ-2000, a next-generation jet engine described could directly challenge the performance and modernization of Western aircraft. Yet, can China's CJ-2000 truly achieve that? How can it surpass the rivals? Let's find out. For years, China has relentlessly pursued its dream of building its own commercial aircraft. With COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, serving as the driving force behind this ambitious effort. Its goal has never changed, to challenge the long-standing dominance of Boeing and Airbus, with passenger jets proudly labeled Made in China. Yet, the road to achieving that ambition has been anything but easy. The first major milestone came in the form of the C919, a narrow-body aircraft designed to compete directly with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. On paper, the C919 matches its Western rivals in size and capacity, and it's promoted as a more cost-effective option, especially for Chinese airlines. However, this flagship aircraft still hasn't escaped the shadow of dependence. Despite being branded as a domestic jet, the C919 relies heavily on imported Western components, from avionic systems and landing gear to the Leap 1C engines produced by CFM International, a joint venture between General Electric and Safran. This means China still has not yet gained full control over its core supply chain. In spite of that, COMAC achieved a historic milestone when the C919 officially entered commercial service and even completed its first international flight to Hong Kong, a symbolic step forward for China's aviation industry. Unfortunately, this narrow-body aircraft failed to obtain certification from the FAA and EASA, the two gold standards that every commercial aircraft must meet before entering global markets. Just when it seemed there was little hope left, Shanghai instead set its sights even higher with the C929, a wide-body aircraft positioned to compete directly with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. Initially, the project was a joint venture between China and Russia under the name CR929, with Beijing handling production, while Moscow took charge of design and engineering. But after Russia was hit with a wave of Western sanctions due to the war in Ukraine, COMAC was forced to take full control of the project, renaming it C929, and continuing development independently in Shanghai. This wide-body aircraft designed to carry between 250 and 320 passengers, is expected to become Shanghai's strategic weapon in the skies. However, building a wide-body jet is far more complex than a narrow-body one, and once again, the engine has emerged as the critical bottleneck. Analysts worry that as long as COMAC remains reliant on Western engines and components, the C929 will never truly be independent. More importantly, such dependence casts serious doubt on the viability of the program, let alone its success, until this announcement changed everything. By the way, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. At the Shanghai International Commercial Air Show on November 20th, 23, AECC, Aero Engine Corporation of China, made a bold move that caught the world's attention. For the first time, it unveiled the CJ-2000 engine program and showcased a full-scale model of the engine, declaring it as the power plant destined to propel COMAC's wide-body C929. More than just a technical reveal, it was a statement of intent. 
China was no longer content with assembling aircraft. It now wants to master one of the most advanced and complex technologies in the entire industry, the jet engine itself. The CJ-2000 represents a significant leap forward, a larger, more powerful, and more advanced sibling of the earlier CJ-1000, which was designed for the C-919. Built with efficiency and innovation in mind, it incorporates cutting-edge features such as composite fan blades, a high bypass ratio, and optimized aerodynamic design to enhance thrust while reducing fuel burn. By May 20, 23, the CJ-2000 had already entered technical testing, with plans to achieve its first flight test by the end of 2024, a timeline that signals how fast China's ambitions are accelerating. But do you know what truly gets impressive? The turbine inlet temperature of this engine can reach up to 2,200 Kelvin, roughly 225 degrees higher than that of Rolls-Royce's Trent XWB-97, one of the world's most advanced engines. With a thrust range of 78,000 to 84,000 pounds, force, the CJ-2000 not only matches, but in some cases surpasses Western counterparts such as the Trent XWB-84 and Trent 1000, engines that power leading long-haul jets today. This marks a technological breakthrough, a moment that could redefine the balance of power in global aviation. If AECC's performance claims hold true, this Chinese engine could transform China into a major force in the global engine manufacturing market. Imagine a future where the C929 powered entirely by homegrown technology, stands shoulder to shoulder with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 on international routes. It's an exciting prospect, isn't it? However, there's one major obstacle. The engine isn't ready for service yet. Developing a jet engine from scratch is one of the most complex engineering challenges in existence. While Rolls-Royce and General Electric have spent decades perfecting their designs, AECC is still racing to catch up. For now, the CJ-2000 remains in the testing phase, with AECC targeting 20 to 30 for it to become fully operational. Yet producing an engine is one thing, earning international certification is another. Before it can take to the skies commercially, it must prove unmatched reliability efficiency, and safety under the world's toughest aviation standards. Still, this Chinese engine is far more than a technological milestone. It's a strategic declaration. If successful, it would mark a turning point for this Asian country, breaking free from dependence on Western suppliers at a time of deepening trade tensions and geopolitical uncertainty. This achievement would not only allow Shanghai to equip its own aircraft with domestic power plants, but also lay the foundation for global exports, dramatically expanding China's influence in the world's aviation arena. Yet that ambition is monumental. The C919 proved that Shanghai could build a capable narrow-body jet, but competing in the wide-body market against industry giants Boeing and Airbus is an entirely different challenge. And that brings us to the bigger question. Can the C929, powered by the CJ2000, truly turn China's aviation ambitions into reality and challenge the dominance of the West? It's difficult to draw any firm conclusions just yet. Comac now faces perhaps its greatest challenge, winning the trust of the global market. While it has achieved several major milestones, most of its orders still come from domestic state-owned airlines. That fact alone raises a question. What can China's homegrown aircraft really do? The absence of large-scale international orders reflects not only a commercial struggle, but also a reminder that China still has a long way to go before it can stand shoulder to shoulder with the likes of Boeing and Airbus. But something interesting has begun to shift. Malaysia is now considering purchasing the C919. This is a potential order, 
More than that, if confirmed, it could serve as living proof that China's aircraft are starting to gain recognition beyond their home turf. This marks the first real turning point, signaling that Shanghai is finally breaking through into the global market. Furthermore, China has never been one to give up easily. On the contrary, it's doubling down, from pouring billions into new airport infrastructure and expanding aviation training programs to leveraging the Belt and Road Initiative as a gateway to foreign markets. Every move underscores a calculated, long-term strategy. The Shanghai Air Show stands as a clear declaration of that ambition. This giant doesn't just want to join the game, it wants to rewrite the rules. Yet ambition and technology alone are not enough. Despite its progress with the C919 and the upcoming C929, many international carriers remain cautious about anything labeled made in China. Quality, reliability, and after-sales support all remain open questions. Until COMAC can fully convince global airlines that its jets meet world-class standards, Shanghai will continue to fly under the shadow of Western aerospace giants. For now, the Chinese maker seems to be taking a steady, strategic approach. The company is focusing on domestic airlines, building partnerships with friendly markets, and aligning closely with government initiatives. Meanwhile, the government is quietly investing in key technologies, from the Beidou navigation system to hypersonic flight research, and expanding its own aircraft maintenance and support networks. All of these points point to one undeniable truth. China is laying each brick carefully in its quest to build an independent aviation empire. Actually, in the grand race for the skies, COMAC doesn't need to defeat Boeing and Airbus overnight. What it needs is persistence to keep improving, expanding production, and earning the trust of its customers one flight at a time. If in the coming years, COMAC can boost output, secure new international orders, and demonstrate reliability, it could capture a modest yet meaningful slice of the global aviation market. But the road ahead is steep. Unless China reduces its reliance on Western components, navigates complex political barriers, and secures crucial certifications from the FAA and EASA, its aircraft will continue to be seen as alternatives rather than true competitors to the Western giants. Yet, this story extends far beyond just building airplanes. China's ambition is to redefine the balance of power in the global aviation landscape. For decades, Boeing and Airbus have reigned unchallenged. But now, Shanghai is positioning itself as the third force ready to disrupt that dominance. With unwavering state support, a massive domestic market, and billions poured into research and innovation, Shanghai is inching closer than ever to its ultimate goal, independence in the skies. Over the next 10 to 20 years, the world may witness a remarkable transformation. China isn't chasing short-term victories. It's playing the long game. And while Boeing and Airbus still rule the skies today, the winds of change are already gathering. And you know that? The next era of aviation might not belong to the West alone. Stay tuned for the latest developments in the aviation industry by hitting the subscribe button on our channel. Thank you, and we wish you safe and enjoyable flights ahead.